Hi everybody, Alicia back from my work basket with the next Tunisian crochet stitch. This is going to be the bobble stitch. As you can see, it creates classic like bobbly pop-ups on your square. This is the actual square for my blanket. It's in this, what's this color? Soft blue of the Nicole brand. This is the same blue that I used in the other sample video for the honeycomb stitch. So you can see that this is how the back of your block is going to look. So you kind of know what to look for. And this stitch is actually far easier, far, far easier than you would think. In fact, if you look at my sample, I have it upside down here. My first row does not have a lot of bobble. And that's because I actually thought it was too easy and was trying to do something different and it actually made it look worse. So it really is as easy as this video is going to show you. Um, you're pretty familiar with this point with my Tunisian crochet hook. Um, remember when you do Tunisian crochet, you're going to want to go up several sizes. So I'm using a J hook, even though I'm working with your worsted yarn. And a Tunisian crochet hook is just much longer than a standard crochet hook. Mine is from the Denise interchangeable set in the color bright. Um, I just have different ends here that can come off. And so I can create different lengths for different projects. I really love this set. If you enjoy Tunisian crochet, I think it's well worth it. If you enjoy any crochet, I think it's worth it because you can use it for regular crochet as well. So let's get started on the stitch. We're going to start with a slip stitch. I mean, a slip knot, just like you would for any crochet. And for this sample stitch, I'm going to chain 12. And 12. And I'm going to always double check your chain. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So what we're going to do is just like any foundation row, we're going to go into the first stitch, we're going to yarn over, we're going to pull it up. And we're going to leave that stitch on the hook and we're going to do that all the way across. This is the main difference between Tunisian crochet and regular crochet. Is that in Tunisian crochet you leave your stitches on the hook and you're going to have two passes. This is a forward pass where you pick up the stitches and then you're going to have a reverse pass or a second pass where you work those stitches off. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. You'll notice you have the same number of loops as your starting chain. So we're going to do our reverse pass of our foundation row here. We're going to yarn over, go through 1, yarn over, go through 2, go through 2, go through 2, go through 2. And we're going to go through 2 all the way across our row. And this is where we're going to start our actual pattern stitch. So this particular bobble pattern alternates your bobbles. And so you're going to start out with four simple stitch rows. We're going to do, remember you don't use this row. We're going to do one, two, three, and four simple stitches. And after we get this one, we're going to do three chains into that stitch. We're going to do one, two, three. As you can see, I'm ignoring these other stitches on my hook and just working with that one stitch. And then we're going to do four more. Two, three, and four. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, again, I'm ignoring these, three, Um, I'm going to check my stitch count on this. I suspect my numbers are off a little bit. One, two, three. Yes. So I should have started with three of these and then a chain. But that is how you do a bobble. So if you're doing the actual blanket, my stitch count is just slightly off. So we're going to do yarn over, go through one, yarn over, go through two. And it's also possible that my stitch count is not off, but that I should have done a different starting chain. But you'll still get the idea of how to do the bobbles and to make them pop. So for this particular bobble pattern, you do one row of bobbles and then you do one row of simple stitch. And so I'm going to do simple stitch all the way across this row. When you went, get to where your bobbles are, I was extremely tempted to go through my bobble, um, but that's not correct. You're going to push your bobble down and go just through this ladder at the top. 
simple stitch across. When you get to that bobble, remember to push it down. If you hold your bobble, you'll see it just looks like any normal stitch. You're going to go across that bobble in the top. And then we're going to do our reverse pass. We're going to yarn over and go through one and then go through two all the way across. So the bobble stitch really is just creating some chains which you then essentially ignore in future rows. You can see my bobbles there. So for this particular bobble pattern, it alternates, as you can see. So it starts with four, and then, you know, they start closer, and then it's over further. And so that's how they alternate on this particular one. So we're going to do two, and then we're going to chain for our bobble. One, two, and three. And then we're going to do four simple stitches. And then we're going to chain three. And remember when you chain, you're just working with that first stitch. So I'm just kind of holding my other stitches back here. And then we're going to do four. Yes, I suspect for my sample, I should have done 13 chains instead of 12. So if you really want to use this for something, you care that it's balanced out, you might want to start with 13 chains. And then I'm going to simple stitch at the end there. I'm sure that different patterns and different types of pattern squares will have you do the bobbles in a different order. Um, I know they do that in regular crochet. You could chart out bobbles in order to form a shape or a name or words. And so this is just a basic way to do bobbles in Tunisian crochet. You can see I've got bobbles on that row. You can see how they alternate. And then this would be another row of simple stitch. So I'm just going to simple stitch all the way across. Remember when you get to that bobble stitch, just kind of tug it down. You'll see that ladder in the top. Just go through there. We're going to work all the way across. Don't forget that end row. You can, at this last stitch, you can go through just one loop or you can go through two loops. That's how it would look to go through the two loops. You pull it up. Two loops does give you a bit of a fin more finished edge. Going through one loop creates this kind of like you could easily stitch them together kind of edge. Either way is okay. When I remember, I do try to go through two and I just messed up there. So you remember when your reverse row, I just completely botched this one, but you want to only go through one and then you want to yarn over and go through two. Just remember, everybody makes mistakes. It's easy to pull back out and do it again. Or if you find out that you, you know, maybe accidentally went through, you know, too many stitches or not enough stitches or. So that's how you do the bobble. I feel like you probably have it, but I'll go ahead and do one more row. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four stitches. And then I'm going to chain three, push that down. Then I'm going to do four stitch, simple stitches. And then I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to work across. Um, in the actual pattern square, it is going to be four on one row and then two on the end row when you get here to the end. But since my starting chain was off a little bit, I only have three at one end. So then I'm going to go yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and I'm going to go all the way back across there. Um, I hope my wrong starting chain isn't confusing you. Your pattern will tell you how many stitches to skip and how many stitches to keep going and how many stitches you should have at the end. Um, the main point is that you do see now how to do the actual chain of bobbles. So you can see that's building little bobbles popping up and then to finish this block off I just finished mine in regular simple regular simple stitch so that's going to go under one 
and pull through both stitches because you don't want to leave these loops. Any pattern will tell you how many rows to do, how many stitches to do between your bobbles. Um, like I said, on this particular block, it's alternating four, but other patterns may do it different ways. And so I'm just going through the ladder and pulling both stitches off. When you get to that bobble, I don't know if you just do it the same way. So you're going to pull it down to ignore the bobble stitch and pull through. If you're following along in the crochet along for the Tunisian crochet throw, this is our last block. We are done after this. Um, I'm going away out of town and I'm hoping to catch up. I'm actually far behind on my blocks. I'm hoping to catch up on finishing all my actual blocks while I'm out of town. And when I get back, I'm hoping to do a video of how I'm choosing to hook my blocks all together. I do have a couple different methods that I use for hooking blocks together, or hooking pattern pieces together. And honestly, I don't usually know what method I'm going to use until I have all my pieces and I'm kind of figuring it out. I know a couple different ways for granny squares and things of that nature to hook them together. So I have to wait, excuse me, get all my blocks done and kind of figure out what I'm going to do. And then I'll show you how. But you can see our nice simple stitch with our little bobbly blocks. Um, I think it would be kind of neat if you did a blanket like this and then maybe hooked a ribbon or an alternating color yarn kind of through those bobbles that could be very pretty kind of weave those in or but so that's our bobble stitch block i hope that learning these bobbles helps you with your pattern whether it be that you're following me with the crochet along or if you just need them for a different pattern that you're working on i hope you check me out at myworkbasket.com i'm always glad to have you i have other tutorial videos free patterns that i give out i talk a lot about vintage crafts and show you fun things i find at the thrift store and all kinds of other stuff so feel free to join me over there i hope you've enjoyed our crochet along if you've been working along i'd always love to see your finished projects feel free to contact me in the comments below or i have a contact form on my website so have a nice day and i'll be showing you soon how to hook these all together